All right, we are on air. Hello, friends. I hope you can hear and see me well. My name is Pavel Filipov, and I am the head of advertising and public relations at Solar Group. Joining me on air today is Fedor Konstantinov, the project manager of Next Generation Airships. And today, in a planned and very regular manner, we begin the exciting presentation of the new investment project, Next Generation Airships. Before we get to the most interesting parts, I would like to kindly ask you to please like this broadcast and also share it. This is especially relevant, probably on VK, because VK is currently the main platform where we conduct our broadcasts. It works reliably in Russia. So while the situation with YouTube is not very clear, we are focusing our efforts there. But actually, you might be watching us on YouTube as well. We are currently broadcasting on the main channel, on the official Next Generation Airships channel, as well as on the official Solar Group channel. Be sure to like and share and subscribe. Remember that the number of viewers on these broadcasts primarily depends on you and your activity. And as a result, so do the funding rates of the project. I also ask you to share the link to this broadcast in some chats. Maybe you are in chats, including those of the investors of the Duyanov's Motors project, but no notification has been sent there yet. And we will begin. Well, today is the presentation, and at the end, we will answer questions. Write your questions. We will try to check them everywhere we are broadcasting, but mainly, we will be looking at VK, so you can start writing in the comments there and we will get to them later. The new project by Solar Group. It has been two weeks since the announcement that we are starting to work on this project. There are already some results. We will talk about this today as well. I will show the current statistics for today. But for now, let's talk about the basics. My first question on this topic is for Fedor. Fedor, tell us why specifically airships how did you and the company Solar Group come to this project, to this direction? And why did airships interest you in particular? Greetings, everyone. Since we're talking about history, let's talk about history. How did it all begin? Uh. Sergei Pavel once actually hired me for a job and gave me this task. Fedya, we receive a lot of inquiries about, here's my technology, Let's finance it, or I'm a developer, or I'm an inventor. And you will have to filter them out, check that everything is functional, that it is economically viable, and that it can be profitable in order to ensure that everything is working properly and efficiently. And here is your task. The most important thing is for the technology to be industry-defining. It's such a cool scale, yes. And what does industry forming mean? There is some new technology, it gets funded, it develops, and from this small point, its wide application will spread in all directions. And this direction will ultimately become huge, a whole industry, essentially. Many projects have come that claimed such a title, indeed industry forming, and it was related to oil, a very, very interesting direction. Now, the classics... Well, those who follow us probably remember, we have already talked about this. Currently, there are traditional oil refineries where oil arrives in huge tanks, is heated, separated, and undergoes a very labor-intensive technological process. Huge factories, huge energy needs for them, and so on and so forth. And there was a very significant development there. They installed an accelerator. Basically, oil was sprayed directly onto the well. The accelerator broke these long chains. Using magnetrons, they repolarized them. And by adjusting the settings of the magnetron and the accelerator, we obtained a ready-made product. Without all these factories, just one installation directly at the well, a very cool technology, really changing the entire industry. It wouldn't create a new industry, but it would make a big impact with economic feasibility and so on. But as soon as this developer appeared online, thanks to us, he was quickly taken away. And we continued to look for such cool and large-scale projects, including many waste recycling stories. 
In the European part of our world, these factories are already operational and well known. In Asia, they are now starting to be widely implemented. In our country, it is still quite difficult. And in many countries, like Turkey and African countries, there is generally a vast untapped field for work. The same goes for South America. But the waste management lobby is very, so to speak, complex. Everything has been divided up long ago. And by the way, one of the statements we constantly encountered was, why are you getting involved? Everything is already divided. No matter where we tried to go, it turned out that everything was already divided. They told us the same thing about the state. In general, everything is fine with waste management. There are cool technologies, but it's really very difficult to implement. We met with Alexander Nikolaevich Kirillov, and it turned out that airships, they used to exist, meaning the technology is definitely functional. He has done this before, that's clear. His team has also done this with him, and they were doing it in parallel as well. And what's most amusing is that the aviation industry is actually stagnating right now. In our country, similarly, and in many countries, it will obviously be clear to those who need it. And for everyone else, it will become clear soon. And analysts from many countries agree that the airship, after all, the whole world is moving towards ecology, the whole world is moving towards energy saving, and while airplanes and helicopters are understandable and advanced technologies, there is this peaceful and eco-friendly technology, like the airship and everyone agreed that they need to start building them. It just so happened that in our country, all the necessary infrastructure is prepared for this, and these engineers, or rather entire teams of academicians, scientists, including engineers, pilots, and others, are all here, and they genuinely need investments to start making it all happen. Were there perhaps any other projects in development, possibly, or maybe, and so, Roughly speaking, there were projects ready to accept investments from collective investors in the form of crowdfunding, but none of them were as cool, impressive, romantic, large-scale, and with such a crazy return as the Next Generation Airships. The Next Generation Airships project is incredibly massive. It is currently in its early stages, and roughly speaking, by planting this seed, a huge forest will grow. There are other projects. They are also seeds. But when you plant them, small trees will grow. The risks are roughly the same in both cases. I can tell you what these projects are. There are many different engines, some even from inventors, and I have this crankless engine, and I have that kind of engine. They all run on fuel, but everyone also understands the coming fuel crisis. Gasoline is already getting more expensive, and it will never get cheaper in our lifetime. And many inventors are developing engines that run on various alternative fuels. Cool projects, I don't argue. Economically feasible, and so on. But again, not as impactful as airships. With airships, when we start this industry, when we launch, when everything starts working, this industry will be able to ensure the implementation of all the necessary engines for it because airships also run on engines, and engines are just a small element of one big system. Very important, I don't argue. Currently, there is a solution for using gasoline engines. Again, airplanes, helicopters, all of these use aviation kerosene, high-octane fuel, and so on. Here it is, gasoline plus solar panels, electricity on electric, like on additional engines. This all works, and in the future, we plan to include these projects as well, which we have selected again in the search for a new project. There are indeed projects with motors, I won't reveal them for now, but it is quite likely that they will all be part of this big interesting project. Well, why did we choose airships? Because it's cool, it's large scale, it'll really impact the entire planet. We will change logistics, everyone will be changing it, the whole world has already started doing it, and we have every chance to be the first because, moreover, if everyone is doing it, it means it is necessary. We have everything we need to get started. So, Pavel, that's probably why we chose it. And eventually, everyone started seeing these signs and symbols around, with ads featuring airships everywhere, 
many videos on YouTube about airships and a lot of searches on Yandex and Google about these airships. Everyone, the whole world is waiting for airships. So as collective investors, we probably have to meet this mass demand. Yes, Fedor, you mentioned changing logistics and so on, but could you elaborate more on the application areas? What kinds of airships are there? What can they be used for? And specifically within our project, what kinds will be created and applied to our airships? Well, what they are and where they are used is a bit of a strange question. Because there are only a few of them, and they are made using old technologies. Investments haven't been poured into them yet. All the current investments are going into completely new developments. Many of them keep it secret, show renders of things they won't actually be doing, and so on. A modern airship is like a carriage used in a tourist center in the central area of the city, which people can ride for tourists. That is what a modern airship is. You arrive in a certain city, there is a carriage with horses, but we don't use horses and carriages in our everyday life. Yet there it is used where tourism is. Just like today, a tourist airship flies in Germany, but in fact, it's a carriage, not a modern airship. Airships have many tasks, and each country has its own needs. Some have vast unconnected territories, like in our country, where there is still permafrost, where there are no roads because of swamps, taiga. Moving things, logistics, is not only about people moving from point A to point B. It's about connecting different enterprises. And the dispersion of enterprises is not only an issue in our country, but in many others as well. For example, Metallurgical plants are often set up near the places where the ore is mined. There, they have both the enrichment and the metallurgy processes. Then these parts, which were produced in metallurgy, need to be transported to the other end of the country because the workforce has accumulated there. They are already engaged in the production of some kind of equipment there, such as the same machines, cars, and so on, related to enterprises, simply transporting the same minerals. There are many different areas of application to talk about, but it is important to understand one principle. When there were no computers, and computers were only in research institutes, no one understood how they would be used in the future. No one knew that we would be talking through them, that everyone would have this computer in their hands. And as soon as the technology hits the market and becomes available, People smarter than us quickly understand where it can be applied and build crazy and incredible businesses around it. The same will happen with the airships. As soon as we demonstrate a modern working prototype with certain technical characteristics and specific economic efficiency, and we announce that, roughly speaking, in series production, it will have such and such a cost, Many businessmen will understand on their own. For example, someone might think, oh, I transport timber using these logging trucks. This will save me this much time and money. They will all calculate and realize that they can apply it here. Another person transports fish, for example. He will be able to apply it here. And a third one installs wind turbines. Everyone says that an airship is very cool for transporting oversized cargo. I've said this many times before, and I'll say it again. Those same wind turbines, when they are transported, they carry one blade like this on some wheeled transport in the city. The city is blocked off, obviously. It's all very complicated. The airship is a simple example. It will be able to take a wind turbine, assembled at the factory, place it in place, secure it, and then calmly fly away. From the perspective of transporting oversized cargo, this technology, is irreplaceable right now, and it will remain so until flying saucers are invented. But it's not just about oversized cargo. Overall, logistics will change significantly, and the approach to designing things will also change. Many factories design boilers in such a way that they are sectional and disassemblable, because a whole boiler cannot be delivered but a section can still be transported. You can't transport it assembled like that.
Therefore, at the design stage, people already start considering what we have in terms of logistics. There are trains, seas, for example, wheeled ones and so on. There are certain dimensions, weight and so forth. And they start designing based on what exists. There are no airships. And therefore, their scope of application will expand, expand and expand just when they start to appear with their capabilities. People just take what is available on the market, oh, this is available, it costs this much and it's great, but there are no airships because people look and see there are no airships and think, do we need to establish an industry? No, come on, I'm doing something else entirely, but someone had to take this on. From our side, it turns out it's us. Here is the answer to such a question. If airships are indeed very effective in many different areas, why haven't they been developed for so many years? Was there something that was preventing this? What do you mean they haven't been worked on for many years? They were worked on, just not funded or not actively funded, even if they were funded. Our very own Kirill Alexandrovich, he lived on something all this time. At first, a certain state institution initially funded these developments, then another corporation started financially supporting them, but as soon as they heard, so to speak, the funding amounts needed. No, Kirillin, that's a lot. It's really unclear. Why weren't they working on it? God knows. It's the same as with electric cars. They were born ahead of their time. Then they were pushed out by internal combustion engine vehicles. And now they have returned due to batteries, computers and management. And these are no longer pure electric vehicles, but hybrids in conjunction with internal combustion engines. It's as if they have returned to their own time and understandably have taken root and now they are not planning to go anywhere. The same thing with airships. We had to wait until a certain critical mass of technologies, orders and so on accumulated. That is, the opportunities, first of all, appeared not so long ago. This computerization by historical standards happened in a snap. And it is precisely computerization that will allow us to make very cool airships. That's one. And two, the economy. The economy is a very important thing in the development of our world. And so on. Its pace and so forth. When the old system could sustain the pace of the economy, nothing new was needed. Everyone can see what is happening with the economy right now. And everyone is finding new ways to support it. And everyone agrees that the new global logistics, based specifically on airships, will help support, if not boost, the pace of the economy. That's why all countries are getting involved with them. It just turns out that everything has its time. So, moving on to modern airships, to our airships, tell us a few words. You already touched on this, but still, there is this boom, worldwide, let's say an airship boom. Other companies in various countries are also working in this direction now. Which companies, what exactly are they doing? What goals are they setting for themselves? We shared links. There were several posts on Telegram. Go to the channel. There it is. The airships pre-launch. Look for it. All the companies are there. We are definitely still adding more. Many people talk about tourism, saying that the airship will be a beautiful tourist vehicle, flying solely on solar panels. Eco-friendly, quiet, and so on. This is most likely all stated from the perspective of popularization. The French do it, the Chinese do it, and other countries do it too. They all make these claims to popularize the idea so that people can see it and overcome, so to speak the Hindenburg Syndrome. When you mention airships, everyone remembers that it caught fire and crashed, and they think, why do we need it? Many countries and companies in general have started creating beautiful images and renders, showing how spacious and beautiful it will be in the cabin, how you will fly over the city, where you will travel, all to get people to accept the idea itself. And no one really says who is doing what, Sergey Brin reveals information, albeit sparingly, but that's because he doesn't have much to keep secret. He hasn't had many successes. In China, 
The last time we received a report was from about six companies that are involved. Half are state-owned, half are private. There is no information at all about what the state-owned companies are doing. They are engaged in serious matters there. They are involved in space. They are involved in military history. They even keep these commercial things secret, like ordinary logistical shuttles. However, three other Chinese companies are widely announcing that they will also be involved in tourism, transporting people to the best places in China. These will be small, roughly speaking, like shuttle buses flying around beautiful locations. They will be aerolifts, where a small balloon, roughly speaking, tethered to a spot with a restaurant and so on, will simply rise up and hover. They also mention what the French are doing, saying that there will be a solar-powered airship for tourism. Most of the talk is about tourism. The Africans, in collaboration with the French, have already launched and are operating a business, fully commercial, for delivering medicines. Small drones are flying between cities. Again, it seems like the same French people, but this time not in Africa, have recently made a drone that will scan, and apparently only scan, these power lines without maintenance. So, there is information about small drones, we will share everything in the chat, but regarding large ships, mainly cities use them for tourism, and everything else is really classified because no one wants to reveal their cards. That's how it is. Well, again, we will throw all the detailed information into the chat, duplicate it, add new information, join the telegram, and look for it. Yes, and soon the website will be up too. I think we will post all the information on the website. You say that not all companies share everything, but our situation is different. Since we are a crowdfunded project, we will be showing and telling everything we have. So let's maybe move on to that. Tell us, this new company being created within the framework of the Next Generation Airships project, what will be created within our project? What assets might there be? What tasks? And what do we want to ultimately achieve by attracting the $100 million in investments that were announced? Then I will tell you who will be flipping through the presentation and what is being created. As stated, a design bureau. This place, it's approximately thousands of square meters of office space in total. We are moving in there from the 1st of October, and the contract starts from the 1st of September. Kirill Alexander Nikolaevich deploys his five main designers at the location in order to, by directions, by devices. They start together, invite others to join, and everyone already knows each other and what to expect. Already linear designers who will be working on calculations, motors in general, there are many directions. The structure of a standard Soviet design bureau. This is being created first and foremost, and we are already very actively engaged in this now. Already on the floor plan, we are seating people, determining how many power outlets and internet connections they need, how the server will operate, access levels, and other details. Right now, everything is already very actively underway. An engineering team will be created in one place, roughly speaking, to solve this task. Until recently, all these people were in various different positions in various different companies, some in commercial structures, some in government, some teaching in universities, and some managing other processes. After the announcement on the 7th, when we shared that we were starting, they began to resign and gather together. This design bureau will act as the main developer, involving many different industry institutes, enterprises, and others. They will create the technical appearance of the device, the preliminary design, and more. They will select subcontractors, with each institute working according to its profile, such as designing the gondola, modeling it, 
calculations and other designs and so on. These will work on the motors and these additional components will make the propellers. A bit later, we will explain how the design bureau works so that everyone clearly understands, in case they don't already, how it all operates. In general, first, a design bureau is being established on rented premises. Second, land. Regarding the land, initially, Alexander Nikolaevich Kirillin had a plan to buy it, purchase the land, change its designation from agricultural to industrial, and extend the necessary project capacities for electricity, water, gas, and roads there. It's all quite lengthy, very expensive, and requires a lot of permits. For anything to be built there, Everyone already understands what a hassle it is, and for it to actually fly there, that's a nightmare. And now work is being done on the ground. I have already mentioned this, and I will say it again. Many people are calling. They say, well, we have an Aerograd. Right here in the Moscow region, we already have land. All the necessary permits for conducting flights are available. Please come to us, build here. Let's establish some kind of partnership relations. Then another person calls Rograd and says, I can't manage money, just buy it from me. I'll sell it to you very cheaply. The third one calls, I know those two have already called you, and I own a nearby flight school, and we can provide you with this infrastructure. That is the land, the documentary framework, and also this. There are really many proposals and we are choosing from all of them. And here is the most important thing, where the investor's money will go. The investor's money will definitely go towards the construction of hangars on this land. Two units, one hangar for light aircraft such as the flying yacht Oris. For now, that's what we're calling it, the second hangar for 10 tonners. In our opinion, this will be the most commercially successful machine. It will be produced in several versions, which I will talk about a little later. In general, land and two hangars. Should we acquire land in... Well, we probably need to buy it. As for agricultural land, we're not sure yet. Obviously, it will definitely be cheaper than buying land already, for example, in Aragrad. But if we figure how much we will spend on improvements and all the administrative work, we will realize that it is probably more cost-effective to buy Aerograd. But the second question is, do we necessarily have to buy it right at the initial stages? We can partner with Aerograd, take a small plot from them, for example, lease it for our hangar for 50 years, with an option to purchase later, set up the hangar there, and then calmly take off from it. And in the future, we will acquire land here, and there for various airship fields, we will need to build quite a few of them, so land will be acquired in any case. The question is whether it will be with this money or already earned funds, but the fact that an airship field will be built is certain. It will either be on rented sites, as I said, on rented land, on our own land, or in partnership with someone. And the fact that it is this airship facility where the money will be invested and the people who invest their money here will be the owners of these hangars, is guaranteed, as well as the land on which they stand. Production. Production here does not mean, in essence, the construction of a plant, as it was, actually done with the current project. This is about establishing a technological line in order to carry out critically important stages of production and efficiently in the process. Alexander Nikolaevich and his team have an understanding. They have already built these airships, not just one, but several, in broad cooperation, and they understand what technological process needs to be undertaken here so that no one can simply, roughly speaking, buy this airship, see how it was assembled, and call everyone. We will be distributing tasks through industry institutes. Call the same institutes. With a small adjustment, release the same thing. Copy it. To prevent this from happening, critical technologies must be kept secret. 
This will be the commercial secret of the enterprise. And so the production, the establishment of this process, well, I can tell you a little bit about it. There will probably be transmissions made. There will be shells made. By shells I mean the actual fabrics. And these fabrics will also be welded, which is a very important technology, and a number of other things that we will talk about a little later. And when we distribute assignments to all industry sectors in October, we will naturally publish all this information for public access, and then everyone will be able to guess which assignments were not outsourced, meaning we started doing them ourselves. Regarding the fact that the plant will not be built, it really will not be built. Again, there are a number of proposals from the same aerotowns. They say, here we have a huge aerotown. Here we have already working hangars. Like, please come, but do it here. We have enough of a hangar. Well, naturally, as long as the roof doesn't leak and it's warm inside. I hope that's clear to everyone. But the hangar is in fact sufficient to actually implement these plans for localizing this production. There is no need to build anything. Everything is already available. If it's not based at Aerograd, then it's a matter of renting small spaces and setting up production that can migrate anywhere. We will build our own facility someday and move there. It's not a problem. The main thing is to master the technological process. Mastering the technological process is the most important thing. And in this regard, we are not worried. We have very advanced technologies. We will talk to everyone, get acquainted, and show everything. And it is in this technological process and equipment that the investor invests, and this contributes to the capitalization. School. Naturally, a school for pilots and technicians will be established, where people capable of operating and maintaining it in the future will be trained. It will either be created from scratch, which is undesirable, just like with the land, or it will be based on an already existing school. Sergei came to a big conference with us. You can watch it on YouTube, where his speech is highlighted separately. He talked about how they are already training pilots. According to all educational standards, and in all government documents, not just now, but since those times, it is written as airplane, helicopter, airship. It's just that there are no airships, and therefore no one was taught to fly them. But all schools are set up immediately with the possibility of training. So based on his school, enter into a partnership and organize all this together with them. Because building, taking your land is all good, but it takes a long time. And why do it if there are people ready to help? You need to take everything ready, be friends with everyone, take of course the strongest ones available, and with them, in general, well, and whoever wants to, most importantly. Together with them, the school will be created using investors' money. This is capitalization on one hand, and on the other hand, it ensures that there will be people to operate, repair, and so on. Additionally, any educational institution is a very good form of business. We can, we are even considering such options, we can organize the hangar itself, and even the production mentioned above, for educational purposes, specifically for training pilots and technicians, and additional training. And thus, well, those who understand, understand in general the entire tax system is completely different. When it's commercial production, that's one thing, but when it's an educational center, it's completely different. But it can be done, it can be produced. Many have done it this way, and so does MAI, the Moscow Aviation Institute. This is how previous airships were made, like those by Augur. This is how it was done. The fact that they are very... And now we will also do the same, but we are currently thinking about how to apply this scheme more broadly. They order part of the work. Uh, MAI has a special division, a design bureau, which includes students. Students enter at once, and there are immediately some tax benefits. With the previous project, we tried to get into a special economic zone in order to reduce this expenditure on taxes and other expenses. Here, without entering a special economic zone, 
you can go directly this way, focusing on the creation of the school, as all of this is done within the framework of the school. Of course, the commercial aspect, like the sale of airships and other things, will be separate, but before the sales, all of this can already be significantly reduced. Well, and external business projects are also mentioned here, which are being created. Here we meant that with the money we are currently raising, we will design and build two types of airships and two hangars, but in the future, of course, we will not stop at just two types. There will be at least four more, and in fact, there will be everything, including the hangars. And so, the amount we are planning to raise now for the creation of the parent company, as we are calling it for now, includes that if you invest in it, then everything it will naturally do in the future will belong to it, and therefore to you. That's how it works. Yes. By the way, it's very interesting that we managed to attract the entire community of airship enthusiasts, so to speak, and those people who have worked in this industry in one way or another, and they are genuinely ready to help. Some do it for free, some as part of a partnership, and it really helps save money. And I've already heard that this sum of $100 million is actually very small for such a project. And people are asking, how will this amount be enough to launch everything? Exactly, Fedor. It seems to me that you explained in detail how we can really save a lot in many areas. And if we hadn't established these partnerships, or if there hadn't been this history of creating airships in Russia, starting all of this from scratch would have been extremely expensive. Regarding the numbers, we have already talked about them in principle. Let me show another diagram now, and you can correct or add anything to what I will be saying. A hundred million dollars, that's what Fedor just mentioned. To implement all of this, a hundred million dollars in investments are needed with a time frame of three to five years during which this project is planned to be realized and the company's capitalization is expected to be one billion dollars. As Fedor explained, why one billion dollars? Here we applied the classic company valuation scheme it is based on the three annual profits such a company will earn. But in reality, I think you understand that capitalization is far from always calculated based on profit. There are companies that are worth 20 or even 40 times their annual profits. This is because people believe in the prospects of this business, in the prospects of this company. Therefore, our valuation of $1 billion, we believe, is very modest but it is fundamentally explainable and understandable. As we later discussed among ourselves, as soon as the first airship takes off, it will indeed be a completely different reality. And this will significantly and undoubtedly directly affect this company and its value, which we are creating. Now, here is a small and simple diagram to make it easier to understand what Fedor was talking about. Here is the design bureau where the design and development of the airships and everything necessary will take place. And indeed, two such aircraft are planned to be created, a two-ton airship and a 10-ton airship. Fedor, please tell us once again about these airships, where they will be used, and why it was decided to start with them. The airship enthusiast suffers from gigantomania. Let me explain again. The efficiency of an airship both technical and economic, increases as the size of the airship grows. In other words, the bigger, the better, to put it simply. And when the designers sit down to calculate what kind of airship we will make, they all start with a small one at first, then they go, well, let's make it a little bigger, a little more, a little more. And in the end, they come to the investor or the government with a project for building a huge one right away, a sensible person watches us and understands like, wait a minute, guys, you haven't done something like this yet, and you already want something this big. They say, no, back then we made a small one, let's build a huge one right away. He says, in that case, that's good. So like, now they are like, well, basically, and that's why they couldn't agree. Here, we managed to convince them that we need to start with a small device. 
Here it is listed as a two-tonner. It will be a flying yacht. For now, it has a code name under the Oris brand, which is the manufacturer of those Russian cars for important people. It will be in a transport passenger version, like when you enter a minivan, everything is done like in an Oris. You sit down comfortably and move around. There is a small bathroom, a kitchenette, and so on. This is the first version. Oris itself wants to make it. They will carry out the lion's share of the work on the gondola, which is understandable. But the device itself, in an unmanned version, will be able to lift two tons of payload into the air for several days and hover, for example, to monitor something. There are many tasks that require monitoring with such a mass. Or move somewhere in an unmanned version with two tons for a couple of thousand kilometers. But no one is doing that right now. Planes, of course, can carry two tons. But it's a plane. You need to load more than two tons there. This is from airfield to airfield. This is a drone. Everyone understands that a delivery drone is cool. The two-ton model will be made under the Oris brand as a passenger vehicle, plus with further automation. You remove the gondola, leaving only the control system, plus the payload capture. Of course, the payload capacity will always vary, but we will most likely create a unified platform so that any cargo can be accommodated. The airship has its own specific features. The shape of the cargo is important, the weight distribution is important, the designers understand this perfectly. There are already ideas on how to stabilize all of this. This is the first. Little yacht. It says two pieces. Here. A boathouse will be built. Now we will show it here. Two experimental samples will be produced. Why two? Because in aviation, you cannot manufacture one aircraft and certify it for mass production. At least two preferably three, to pass all tests, obtain all certificates, and further set up mass production. With the money we are indicating here, two such prototypes will be produced. They will be certified for mass production, and also a 10-ton model. The 10-ton model also comes in various versions, including a tourist version, which offers enhanced comfort for your journey, and more features, such as additional amenities meaning it is a single space. As just a passenger, it's a completely different space, like a plane or a bus. You sit down and go. This is a cargo passenger vehicle for when you need to transport both people and some cargo, for example, to a work site in the north along with equipment and purely cargo. The cargo version also comes in two variants. There's the piloted one, where there are two pilots, for example, carrying some very valuable cargo and the unmanned one. Here is the unmanned one. It is indicated that the device can lift 10 tons, but 10 tons is what it can lift in the same, for example, tourist version, 10 tons of people, food, water, and other entertainment. And if the space for this tourism is not needed, it also weighs something, which means it will be able to lift not 10 in cargo mode, but 15, or maybe even more. Two units will also be produced in order to certify them for mass production, test them, naturally certify them, and prepare for mass production. So, the perspective here is indicated as three to five years, but most likely a small yacht will take off in less than three years, and within six months to a year after its takeoff, a 10-ton airship will also take off. Will take off does not mean it has already taken off and started making money. Will take off means the first flight tests, and from that moment its certification begins. This will take from six months to a year. According to our optimistic estimates, airplanes and helicopters will take much longer to certify. But considering that an airship is a much safer thing, we are allowing for a period of six months to a year. Certification, that is, if it takes off in less than three years, then no later than four years we will already be producing it in series. Consequently, series production means profit, dividends, and in a year, the 10 ton model will also go into series production. That's why we are making them in pairs. I think I explained it right. So within the design bureau, two types of airships are being created, Earth. Yes, we continue to reveal our scheme, Earth, which Fedor mentioned. 
So there are options to get it for free, and we will strive for that. On this land, there will be two hangars where the assembly of the aforementioned aircraft will take place. Both the school and the production, that is two important elements as well. Why and how we just talked about this. Indeed, this is indeed the most basic and fundamental implementation of this project, which represents our most conservative scenario. But in reality, even we do not focus on it because as soon as those first flight tests appear, once we show that this is indeed a company capable of designing, developing, and producing these aircraft. It is expected that by this time additional customers will already appear, and I have just shown them already on the diagram. Fedor, say a few more words about additional clients. That is, how you plan to work with them, and what kind of additional profit, in what format it might be. The airship community, both in our country and in other countries, has actually done a great deal of work extensively and thoroughly in finding a potential and suitable customer for their airship in various fields and industries. Some focused on drones that carry from 200 kilos to 2 tons, while others focused on finding clients for loads from 2 to 10 tons. The third one is from 10 and above the fourth one is already aiming for 300. All customers have already been prepared not only by our airship specialists, but also by this global airship community. There is a customer, and the customer is currently looking at what these airship developers have now. He looks at these guys. They are working on some startup. They don't have enough team members, insufficient resources, and lack results. He looks at these others. They are serious, but everything is in disarray. That's how it is with us. It seems like they are all academics, all experienced people, but they work in different departments and haven't come together. And he keeps watching and realizes that, okay, let's say I believe these ones, but this is one out of a hundred customers. The rest say, you are not ready. We will be ready in a year. We will have a design bureau. Industry institutes will work according to our technical specifications. Models will be ready. And even gondolas flying yachts. In a year, it will be possible to enter it. We will probably exhibit it somewhere at an exhibition, maybe even more than one. The seriousness will already be clear, the scale will be understood, the prospects will be visible, and a customer with their money can come to such a company. They will come gladly saying, I understand everything. These guys will succeed. I need, for example, this kind of machine that will perform and they will set their own technical specifications. I need to move this many kilograms from here to there for this amount of money, for example, and transport them using these routes. And they pay money for the development. Naturally, the money for development includes profit, and if the company makes a profit, that means dividends, and if there are dividends, that means they are yours. That's how we attracted one or two customers. We know of major players, who need airships, who will come and, to put it in Russian, seriously get involved in the project, and they are just waiting for us to build the foundation where they will come. We are developing a legal framework to protect our crowd investor from potential encroachments on future profits from such major players. Don't worry. Everything will be done so that we will be encroaching on their profits together with you and not them on ours. That's basically, in essence, the summary of what we are doing in the near future. Today, it is a design bureau, two aircraft, land, two hangars, a school, and the production of these critical components and elements. This will allow us to produce and manufacture our own airships in series, sell them, and earn from it. In addition, there will be external clients and customers for whom we will be doing, let's say, special projects from which this company will also be able to generate profit. 
This is within the framework of the current funding and the current project and scope. But of course, the company does not plan to stop there. Definitely not in the near future. And as Fedor said, there will be other airships. But how this company will develop in the near future, we will definitely see how it will undoubtedly look. Essentially, we have several such crossroads here. The first crossroads is that, in principle, the company can develop on its own profit, and that is completely normal. Now let me switch to the next slide. You see the diagram has become larger. These are the prospects for the next 50 years. And then there appeared four more aircraft, two more hangars, several more customers, and an additional operating company. This is how it will look in five to 10 years in the future. And this company plans to do it with their own money, which is quite impressive. Naturally, investors will also profit from this, which is a great opportunity. The company is developing, growing, progressing, and earning more money. And accordingly, those who are co-owners of this business, including investors who are investing today, earn more money. Indeed, we are also considering the scenario that additional funding may potentially be attracted for significantly faster growth. This funding can be attracted from large investors. For example, an investor might come and say, I am ready to implement a project with you for a 20 ton or 40 ton or stratospheric airship. Alternatively, this can also be done within the framework of collective investments, but these investors will already be investing and entering not into the parent company, and they will invest differently from the current investors. Therefore, the share of current investors will not be diluted, even if there is additional funding. Separate companies will be created for these airships, forming a holding, and people will be able to invest in such targeted projects such as these. This can be compared when talking about the Duyanovs Motors project to the creation of a special diamond. Specklemash is being created, and in the future, investors will be able to invest in the establishment of this plant, production, and earn profits from this production. However, those who invest in Sobelmash today will also earn from Specklemash in the future because Sobelmash will naturally be founding this company. Therefore, those investors who join us today are reaping all the benefits, and this is fair and right. At the same time, I think that even the prospects of these 50 years are, of course, just the beginning for such a company. There are a huge number of plans, and there is an understanding of where to go further. But if we consider the prospects for 20 to 30 years, the forecast will be less certain because the market situation may change, the market's needs may evolve, and new technologies may emerge. So things could still change here. Here we clearly see this path and will follow it, and you will be able to observe it, yes. I think it is very interesting to watch the creation of such a company, and you can participate here, contribute your efforts, yes, as an investor, and help with your investments to make all this happen. Here, we also have these arrows to make it clearer for you. Yes, you see how and where the customers and money are moving where they are coming from. If you want to take a closer look at this presentation, you can request it. In principle, we send it out. I think we can even post it as news so that you have everything. And soon it will be on our landing page. Returning to these arrows, customers, money, as it was already. I want to comment on these arrows, customers, money. It was mentioned that there will be customers for the development of special devices to fulfill their specific tasks, as well as customers for the serial devices that we have already developed. This is what the upward and downward arrows signify. It's good that we will build two prototype devices, and further in the series, it will most likely be a prepayment pre-order. So, in three years, in the most pessimistic scenario, we will launch the first device, and in four sasta years, we will start the series production. This means that before S4 during flight tests, we can already take pre-orders for the series, accept down payments or full payments, and there will already be profit and dividends. That's how it was explained.
Well, Fedor, could you continue perhaps a bit with the roadmap? You will see the steps and stages by which the project will be implemented from a technical standpoint in detail and thoroughly. Well, I see it. Yes, there's no point in reading it. People who understand Russian can read it themselves. Sequence in simply just two words. What's the sequence? Let me put it this way. The first step is to essentially gather all the designers together and assign tasks to the industry directions. Initially, everything will be done in steps. First, the initial step will be taken on the yacht. All tasks were initially handled by ourselves. Everything was worked out. Assignments were distributed and we are monitoring. The process has stabilized. The same goes for the Distitonic. We worked everything out ourselves, distributed the tasks, and are monitoring. The process has currently stabilized in parallel with what the devices are doing. Also, simultaneously the hangar. It first needs to be designed, meaning it has to be fully developed by us. All the groundwork is actually already in place. Just double check everything again, understand if it's the right thing, but we are exploring the ground and things will change a bit there. These are the details. There are designers detailed to whom we issue the most precise technical specifications on how to do it. So we refined everything ourselves, handed it over to the design office and are monitoring what they are developing there. Also regarding the 10 ton model. The stages are listed here, but the dates are not specified. So everything I am saying here can be tracked. Active work is currently being done on the airships in the development phase. The development phase involves not only computer and paperwork. The development phase is when models of units, assemblies, or the entire gondola are being manufactured. Some components are already in progress and undergoing testing, while others will have untested solutions. This is all part of the development process. When the designers, like Kirillin or others, talk about development, they mean from the moment of creating the device on paper or in digital space to the moment of its assembly. Like, this is all development. Once it is assembled, the development is finished and testing begins. In general, while the devices are being developed, the hangars are being designed and constructed in a very rapid manner. Here are the first two shipyards. The first one starts being built first. By the time it starts being built, its components and assemblies are already being tested with ground tests underway. There is an adjustment of one to the other. These ones did something. Those ones did something. They need to be reconciled. Oh, it worked out great. As soon as this hangar is completed, the first one for the yacht, all the developers already have all the designs ready. These materials are ready. The engines are ready here. The gondolas are ready here. And so on. Everything immediately goes to the Elling and starts being assembled. And as soon as this Elling was finished being built, they started assembling a yacht here. And we begin construction. If we haven't started in advance, we will most likely start in advance. It's better to begin step by step. We are starting the construction of a hangar for a 10-tonner meaning we finished this one and are moving on to work here. We are building a hangar, assembling the apparatus here. The apparatus is assembled, and in fact, the assembly of the apparatus is a very quick process when everything is ready, naturally. It was brought to the hangar, assembled, and in two weeks it will be able to take off smoothly. It is clear that it can conditionally take off from setting up the engines to all these various computers and other control systems and blah 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 all of this needs to be synchronized naturally everything will be worked out on the ground in advance but still helicopter pilots if you are here write in the comments how much time passes from the assembly of the first unit to the moment it simply lifts off the ground much is happening the apparatus is standing on the ground the engine was started without the engine some systems were turned on, checked, turned off, and they documented everything. Then they started the engine, turned it off, and moved on. The second, third, fourth, then thrust delivery starts. There's the liftoff from the ground, some minimal flight, material durability. Holding it like this won't work. Everything will be much faster. And while all this is happening with the yacht, the construction of this hangar is being completed. This one is taking off from here. 
The 10 ton apparatus is already starting to be assembled here because it has been developed, everything has been tested on the ground, and assembly can begin. And at the same pace, well, it's clear, the small yacht is certified, licensed, and this boathouse and this wide cooperation is already all prepared to start mass producing them and ready to go in the near future. In this boathouse, all the components arrived were thoroughly assembled, tested, certified, and then finally sold. And then the Tenton apparatus follows, going through all the same stages. That is, the small yacht is launched and commerce begins. The Tenton apparatus is launched and commerce begins. Ideally, we should not stop, and as soon as the boathouse for the Tenton apparatus is completed, we should immediately build a couple more for the Tenton apparatus to ensure a wide series. A wide series is necessary for the apparatus to have, so to speak the right economics. When you produce 10 apparatuses a year, that's one thing, but when you produce 100, it's a completely different matter. A completely different price, and therefore its economic indicators are significantly more interesting to the customer. Ideally, we should start right away. Once we build this one and understand that it suits us, we don't need to change anything. If changes are needed, we will naturally make them. We should immediately lay down plans for two more of these. And of course, in parallel, we will continue with the larger apparatuses. As we discussed, the basic plan includes two boathouses, one for the small yacht and one for the 10-ton apparatus. And this model is like a global MVP, an industry MVP, where this unsinkable unit can further sustain itself through its business and commercial activities, developing all subsequent directions. This is what we strive for. With or without attracting investments, that will be a question for the future. In fact, it can definitely manage on its own right now. Once built, the question will be up to the investors. What do we do with the profit? Do we take it out, enjoy it, and invest the next one here, for example? Or will everyone say, let's wait a bit longer and direct all the profit towards development, so we get more later? But that's not mandatory. We can do it this way, that way, or another way. In general, we'll decide everything together with you. But overall, the roadmap is thoroughly outlined up to the completion of the construction of the small yacht's launch, and also in detail, the completion of construction for 10-ton boathouse, launch, certification, and mass production. This concludes this detailed roadmap. Yes, thank you. And moving from the roadmap to Nova Company, to the shares, so to speak, Yes, Nova Company, we keep saying company, company, without mentioning the name, right. There are other variations of what it can be called, and investors have suggested various interesting names, but we will most likely settle on Nova Company, which is indeed the very company being created, and which will definitely implement the project. Here we have a scheme similar to the Do Nova Engine project, I think the current one. Doesn't quite fit, doesn't it? No, it doesn't fit. Please kindly write in the comments section what to name this enterprise again. Let's keep it basic as Nova, but we might consider changing it in the future. Yes, there is still such an opportunity, so do make your proposals. Regarding the distribution, within this newly created company, 51% goes to the team that is implementing the project, essentially the same as in the Do You Know of Engines project and 49% goes to the solar group company. But in fact, this is actually the very collective investor, and these 49% will be distributed among those who invest in the project today. We plan to immediately and publicly make an official announcement about both the final number of shares and the final number of stakes, respectively, so that you can easily and accurately independently calculate your share in the company and estimate your potential profit. And I know that this is definitely something many people missed in the Do You Know of Engine project. And here we will try to do this for you. At the moment, there are currently 1 billion shares that will be issued by Nova Company and approximately 50 billion shares that will be issued by Solar Group, respectively. They will be final in total. Shares will also be issued in the company's register. This company, Solar Group, which is currently registered in the Comoros, 
has changed its registration, allowing it to issue both registered and bearer shares. The first shares that can be initially sold to potential investors. That is, our licensing allows us to implement this particular scheme precisely in this way. You can now see these numbers on the screen. If there are 100 billion shares, 1 billion shares will belong to Nova Company. Approximately 500 million shares will be distributed among investors. And accordingly, 50 billion shares will be sold by Solar Group. Further details on discounts and financing stages. Details on everything that Fyodor talked about will be completely and thoroughly financed within the framework of 20 stages in total. But right now we are currently in stage number zero or as we also call it, the pre-launch stage. This is the stage where we, together with you, are indeed preparing this project, you could say, live. In previous years, for several years now, while we were working on this project, it was not public, but we did share some information. Even Alexander Nikolaevich Kirillin spoke to our partners and some investors back in 2021. Currently, this is a public active phase of preparation which in turn already necessitates some financing, including for conducting various webinars and to start hiring some employees and renting offices at this stage. Therefore, investments are already being attracted at this stage, but things can change. What new information would I like to highlight here? First of all, we initially stated that approximately 2.5 million would be raised during the initial pre-launch phase. But in previous webinars, we have already mentioned that at this moment, we plan to attract only $1 million in actual payments. This will successfully complete the pre-launch stage and somewhere around five, $10 million should accumulate for us in installments by that time. This will definitely be enough for us to successfully receive financing, even on these installment payment plans. And of course, new investors will absolutely join. And what else should be taken into consideration? It's very, very important. People often ask now, can the package be increased? And can the canceled installment plan be reinstated? It was possible to do this using the example of the Duyunov engine project. And just yesterday we discussed it and we have practically made a decision. I think you will see the news about this soon that it will not be possible to increase your investment package in this project. Therefore, if you invest at the pre-launch stage today, remember that you will not be able to increase your pre-launch package in a year. Therefore, take the investment that you truly consider worthy within the framework of this project while these conditions are available to you. The only thing is that the package has the potential to be increased within the current stage at this point in time. So if you have currently taken a package, for example, for $2,000, but you keep in mind that this is just the beginning and overall you are ready to invest maybe $10,000, $20,000. You will be able within the framework of the pre-launch stage to increase from $2,000 to, for example, $20,000. But once the first stage begins, you will not be able to increase your package under these conditions during the initial stage. We will have to take only the new investment package for the first stage. Therefore, please pay attention to this. It is very critically important to realize this and indeed make the right choice today. The same also applies to the restoration of cancelled installment plans. In this project, we definitely plan to act more strictly than before, and we will absolutely not offer the option of installment payments, which we previously offered. Therefore, if you take the investment package at the pre-launch stage and unfortunately stop paying your installment plan at any time, it will be cancelled and will not be subject to reinstatement. Yes, there will be a grace period. Yes, we will give you some time to make the payment. It's not about being exact to the day. We understand that different situations happen in life, but coming back in six months and making one payment to restore the installment plan, that won't be possible. Why won't any of this happen? neither an increase nor the possibility of recovery. Not because we simply want to be tougher with investors, but primarily because we have a limited number of shares. Accordingly, if you have definitely chosen a package and bought all the shares, our pre-launch phase has indeed ended 
and investors have bought all the shares allocated for the pre-launch phase. We cannot increase the package because in that case, the number of shares within the card phase will become even larger. And where can we get them? They have all already been bought out. The same goes for the cancelled installment plans. If you had a cancellation, it means you had reserved these shares beforehand. But in fact, you actually did not pay for them. These shares will be put up for sale and sold to other investors. For other investors, it will be a stroke of luck that, for example, several million shares from the pre-launch stage will be back on sale. They will be quickly bought up by current investors. Consequently, you will not be able to restore your installment plan because your shares have already been resold to other investors. Please pay attention to this and remember the pre-launch stage will end quite quickly. I also ask you to convey this information to everyone as it is a common question. If we move on to the financial data, I would like to draw your attention to the fact that you can actually watch them live. This statistics is publicly available. Now I am showing it as a screenshot. You can see that we already have $213,000 in actual payments. Investment packages worth $3 million have been sold. I think there will be more today. We have 900 packages and there are practically 900 investors as well. This is a very good start. It shows that the topic resonates with people because there are no materials yet. Nothing is available, but people are actively investing. And someone might say, maybe, yes, listen, why $200,000 for how long did it take us? Less than two weeks. That's not so much. In the do-it-yourself engine, there are $3 million coming in. But understand, this money comes from installment payments. When $3 million came in, 80-90% of that money came from installment payments. And specifically, new investors only paid about $100,000 to $200,000. Therefore, since we have these installment plans, and in this project, by the way, the installment plans are even more favorable because you can take, for example, a package for $2,000 with an installment plan, I think for 30 or so months, I think there is even one for 40 months. In general, very long installment plans, up to 50 months. Yes, this money will be spread out over time. So this monetary mass will accumulate and month by month, we will attract some new investors, some hundreds of thousands of dollars and more will come in from each month's installment payments. I think that very soon this project will reach approximately the same pace of several million dollars per month that we had in the previous project. It seems to me that 95% of our audience still doesn't even know that this project has started. We are not, mind you, pursuing any aggressive policy. We do not spam newsletters. We do not send out let's invest messages to all our investors. We act gently. We are laying the foundation, preparing the websites. And now, for example, we are already conducting these webinars on the resources of the new project and are not using the old one at all. That's why we will gradually notify everyone. The link is publicly available. I think it was in the news. You can go and read all about it. The last important thing that should, let's say, accelerate our project is, of course, the necessity to execute the marketing plan for our existing partners. I would like to note that we have indeed fulfilled the promise that everyone was eagerly asking about, and you can clearly see that all the structures are well preserved. All your established connections, clients, investors, and partners are retained. You can continue to actively work on the new project. The only thing is to simply receive referral rewards from those investors who were already in your Duinova engine project. You need to complete the marketing plan. If you are registering new investors now, there is no need to execute any marketing plan. Your investors can invest in the first and second projects and you will receive referral rewards. If you want to receive referral rewards from your old investors, Simply follow the marketing plan, which is detailed on our landing page in your personal account. You need to make a repost there, take a package worth $2,000, make an actual payment of $500 as a partner, and fulfill any one of the following conditions. Either have three investors in the first line with an investment of $500 each, or 10 investors with an investment of $50 each, or make a small focus by personally investing $10,000.
And in that case, your structure will open immediately. We released a news article just yesterday that describes all of this in detail. Be sure to read this because you will not be able to receive referral rewards from your old investors until you do so. It is very important and essential. You are missing out on your important referral reward and it will not be returned to you. Please take note of this. Regarding the starting positions and arrangements, let me say a few additional words about this. We are definitely confident that the new project we are creating will be even more extensive and more interesting than anything we have done before. And one of the criteria why we are absolutely indeed very confident in this is because we are starting from completely different uh, positions. The infrastructure of investors and partners that we have, along with the loyal community, will allow the project to develop extremely quickly from all perspectives, including financing and the various personnel that will be involved in this project. Therefore, everything will be even bigger, even more extensive and even more interesting. Many note that even the project itself, in terms of its visualization, is very colorful and fairy tale like, and a large number of renders will soon be prepared. I think that, in my opinion, when people see what we are currently trying to convey with words, the reaction will be absolutely, without a doubt, completely different, and the 500,000 people in our audience will quickly catch on to the project, and we will all notice it immediately and without delay. So friends, keep an eye on the statistics, and remember that these pre-launch conditions are unique and special, and will not be repeated in the near future. It will not be possible to increase the package under these specific conditions. So act today and buy the maximum package today if you genuinely like the project. It deeply resonates with you and you clearly see potential in it. The best is always reserved for the first. And on that note, I suggest we move on to the questions. Indeed. What shall we do, Fedor? I can read them out or you can look at them yourself. Well, I just skimmed through, yes. Here they are asking questions about when it will be possible to train competent pilots and if there are simulators. There is a simulator, yes, someone has one. We talked. They used to teach and train, but all the simulators were modeled after the airships I used back then. Now, everything needs to be redone. I can't say how long the training will take yet. But if we plan to take off in less than three years, then we definitely need to start studying no later than a year and a half from now, at this moment. Currently, we need to start studying in the near future, no later than a year and a half from immediately. There are other questions here, such as how many shares are there? One share. Is there an understanding of this issue? Additionally, are there any other questions? I will also consider the question about the shares. Look, you see the total number of shares? You see the total number of units, and by purchasing a particular investment package, you can see how many units are in that investment package. Then, you just need to perform a simple arithmetic operation to determine how many shares, how many units, and how many shares will belong to you. And accordingly, your share... I believe that the process of calculating this is relatively straightforward and not overly complicated. It involves a few simple steps that are easy to follow. Yes, Pasha, you can ask questions if noted them down somewhere. Well, I'm looking. Yes, there are questions on Vcontact. Let's see. They are asking if the pre-launch is still ongoing at the moment, right now. Yes, the pre-launch is still ongoing. They just mentioned that it will likely continue until it reaches $1 million in funds. There won't be enough space for everyone in this pre-launch phase, that's for sure because the pre-launch phase is strictly tied to the numbers. Therefore, the fact that many still don't know that the project has been launched means you still have an opportunity. And regarding the questions for Fyodor, in your opinion, how exactly durable are the materials of the airship? And please tell us more about it in detail. Will the sphere withstand being shot at? The technology could be interesting for military purposes if, for example, the production cost is very low. And also, Alexander clarifies, for example, if they shoot at it with a standard AK-47 using standard ammunition, what will happen? The AK-47 is no longer standard. The AK has come a long way since then. And if you shoot from the new standard AK now, it can even penetrate a vehicle. 
What's there to say about the colorful balloons? In fact, the main question is only that the car is right here, while the airship is actually up there. There will be orders from the military and so forth. This, of course, will definitely all be worked out. It will definitely be in the optical range, camouflaged in the radio range and invisible. And at such heights, where you can't hit it with something like an AK, for example, but with an SVD, for instance, you can definitely hit it. What will happen to it? Well, if you hit the equipment, of course, some of it will definitely fail, but the apparatus itself won't go anywhere. It will calmly land in automatic modes. In fact, if you hit the gas-filled bag, the sensors will immediately and accurately notice, and it will fly straight to the service base. It won't crash like a stone. It will most likely fly calmly and safely. But getting into such an apparatus at that height is actually quite a challenge. Indeed, really, it is actually quite a challenge. For the military, most likely, if we are talking about military apparatuses, there is an apparatus that will be a two-tonner, which is the flying small yacht. They will be able to lift special equipment necessary to perform required tasks, and they will be located, well, if we are talking about the military again, let's imagine that here is the line of contact, and here it is, already calm. The apparatus is in a calm zone, and from this distance it can observe everything that needs to be observed, ensure the completion of all tasks, and remain in safety, and it can only be reached by guided missiles. Even with guided missiles, not all guided missiles actually hit the target. It's the same as always here. As for those apparatuses that are planned to be used in turbulent areas, there are different altitudes actually involved. In general, it will be very difficult to hit them. If we recall recent history, when the Chinese probe, balloon, came to the Americans, they fired everything they had at it, but nothing hit. The probe was calmly flying around. There was a worldwide commotion. So much money was spent to shoot it down, and it turned out to be a toy. Well, it's clear that no one will make a toy for the military. There will be other apparatuses with maneuvering capabilities, and so on. In response to the question of what will happen if you shoot it with a Kalashnikov rifle, we will assemble the first apparatus, set it up, and shoot it. Let's see. But you see, in real life, all of this will happen completely differently and no one is going to put him at risk. Something like that. And so Alexander also asks whether it makes sense to quit state institutions if, on the contrary, one needs to be on the staff of the institution as a liaison, additional administrative authors. That's correct, yes. I am also looking at this comment right now, at this very moment. Some employees, unfortunately, will be laid off from those structures which are considered to be useless. In our work, some employees will initially start on a part-time basis. They will be part-time here, part-time there. Contracts are already being signed with these people, and without quitting their current jobs, they are coming here part-time to properly maintain communication, contact, control, and so on. In general, everything is being done competently. Now, a question about finances. What is the discount for the zero stage and the first stage? Have we decided or not? By the way, I didn't mention this, although it was visible on the chart. I'll show it again now. As you can see, you can clearly see even from the bar that the discount at the current pre-launch stage is indeed twice as high as the discount at the first stage. So, Currently, the average discount across all packages is around 1,000, but in the first stage, it will average 500. Therefore, yes, it is now indeed twice as prudent to invest compared to the initial stage. As you already understand, very few will be able to obtain such conditions because there is simply a limited amount of finances that will be acquired under these terms. So please pay attention to this as well. In the future, the discount will decrease less sharply. You can also see this in the columns and samples, somewhere around 10 to 15% from stage to stage, just like we had in the engine project. 
So, regarding other questions, I have just now opened them just now. Here, while you are opening it, yes, it is written. When loading the transported cargo, how will the lift be compensated? Will the gas be pumped back into the tank or will ballast be used? We have already worked through this issue in detail, though perhaps not as thoroughly as you would like, but we have explained the principles, how they can be applied in related ways, which will be used and which will not. We covered all of this on Thursday with our guest Dimitri Kamel. You can watch the recording. I'm not sure if we included the code there, but we answered this question well and will provide a more detailed answer later on. I see you wrote here, maybe even answered these questions in the process, but I think we can discuss it again on YouTube. For example, the first question. So a strong connection with solar panels on the airship will be for energy efficiency. Well, naturally for both energy efficiency and environmental friendliness, yes, the concept of energy efficiency includes this. For us, for example, to lift the apparatus upwards, energy will not be particularly expended. It has zero or negative buoyancy. Let's say, some will be overloaded, some will be like that. That is, it ascends almost for free. To fight against winds, hover in place, and stabilize, the energy from the solar panels will be sufficient, which, with the help of electric motors, will stabilize the airship. So again, it's essentially free. And only to gain speed and fly somewhere at high speed, that's where the energy will be spent. Therefore, yes, solar panels for energy efficiency, naturally. But if we look a bit further, for example, when these are stratospheric platforms with sprayed solar panels, this platform will not only provide itself with electricity to perform necessary tasks, operations and functions, but it will also be able to transmit it to Earth, thus acting as a power plant. There it is easy to calculate the surface area of the envelope for solar energy in that atmosphere, and in the stratosphere the atmosphere is rarefied, there is more sun there than here, and here it's a couple of kilowatts per meter, but there it's even more. Now the question of how to transmit it downwards is another matter, but these are issues for the future and they are purely technical. From a technical standpoint we are living in the right century for such issues to be resolved very quickly. Here are a few questions regarding airship training. How much time is needed for this? When can we start? A bit more. Will there be any discount for a pilot investor? Are there any simulators available now for training such airship pilots? Yes, I partially answered in the chat and partially here. Uh, I haven't answered whether there will be a discount for pilot investors, but if Pavel conducts such a promotion, then there will be we need to understand how many people are interested. But I think that for investors, in any case, many investors have approached us regarding the current project. And they, by the way, have become employees of Solar Group and even employees of Sobolmash. Even such cases were completely normal. I think that there will be a similar situation here. I assume that pilots, engineers, and all other specialists will get in touch. I think we will communicate with everyone. If they are quality specialists, of course we will work with them. That is the right thing to do. So, now let's watch the Color Group broadcast together, right now, and enjoy, and have a great time. Yes, Fedor, you can say it again out loud, because not everyone saw the chat there. How much time is actually needed to train a pilot? I said there, and I will say the same thing here once again. I honestly don't know exactly how much is needed for training. The training programs will be formed only together with the complete creation of the school. Most likely it will be similar to the way it is done for airplanes. Someone needs to get up, just like on an airplane. You can open Google right now, type I want to learn to be a pilot and check the timelines now. Most likely it will be more or less the same. There will be a distinction between a private aviation pilot, which means shorter terms and less money, but if it's a commercial pilot, then it involves higher education institutions. Naturally, this is long and expensive. Here, it will most likely be like with private pilots at first, naturally, but a serious school is planned. 
first a school, then a college, and eventually maybe even a university. By the way, there are actually a lot of questions on the channel. They are really quite complex, but interesting. So maybe in a few words, we will talk about this today. They are asking for more detailed information about stratospheric airships and rigid airships. They are asking to talk about them. Well, more detailed information again can be initially taken from the webinar that was on Thursday with guest Dmitry Sergeyevich Kamel. We touched upon the stratosphere there. He explained what we plan to do more or less and how things are generally speaking more or less. I mean, it's not that we plan poorly, but I explained it poorly. We actually plan broadly and with a bang. What about the stratosphere? We will fly to the stratosphere in the near future. We will start with small devices. There are currently plans to launch the first device by the end of the summer. Without direct streaming of video and other content available for now. This task is definitely solvable and not difficult. And we will be launching such devices before the new year. Now the stratosphere can generally be accessed with a small latex balloon which is essentially a toy that simply ascends to a certain height, performs the task of lifting a camera that captures some footage, then bursts at altitude and falls back down with a GPS beacon so it can be found. This takes four to five hours. It is really just a toy. It is really just a toy. Our company already has the technology to control its altitude for up to a week, move and change winds first to the right, then to the left in a controlled manner, meaning controlled flight. We can achieve this very soon for a duration of approximately a week in both directions. By New Year, the same thing, only longer. Already flying to the North or South Pole with a direct streaming video signal. And these are just initial plans. They are indeed simply to demonstrate that we are not amateurs. Yes, and our engineers are great and we can implement all of this quickly. That's one thing, just to tell to announce ourselves, so to speak. Two, this is a very interesting proposal for commerce. When we can controllably change airflows, hover over a certain point, and for example, conduct some monitoring, relay transmissions, and so on. This is already serious commerce, and by this new year, we can definitely launch such a demonstrator into the air, and we will absolutely launch it. So, what I was saying there about commerce, about airships, it was about airships. Ultimately, with stratospheric devices, all of this will lead to large stratospheric platforms that will practically replace satellites. Yes, and it might even perform certain tasks better than a satellite, and not just might, but definitely. For example, remote sensing of the Earth from satellites is practically impossible with the same resolution quality that can be achieved from the stratosphere with these devices. But there's the weight issue. We'll start with small ones and move on to larger ones. Well, about the rigid airships, I don't know what the question is. You didn't elaborate on it much. Specifically, is it possible to create rigid airships made of carbon fiber in any way or not? in the field of engineering and technology. It will definitely be made of rigid carbon fiber. It is unlikely that there will be any other solution. There, metal structures were also considered, for example, made of some kind of aviation aluminum. Sergei Brin makes it from carbon fiber and titanium. It has titanium brackets and carbon fiber tubes indeed, actually. It's not quite that. Most likely it will be. Yes, it can be made of carbon fiber. It will be made of carbon fiber. It doesn't necessarily have to be only made of it, but as part of something. Many companies around the world are currently searching for the exact formula for this rigid airship. What is its structure? What are the spatial characteristics? What materials are used? And what is its condition under stress or not under stress? Is it inflated with gas or not? What are the connection nodes like? Is it tied to an inflatable structure that is then deflated, meaning it is tied, hardened on something, and then removed? And this is indeed the very idea. In the race of airship technology development, 
because the technology you choose will ultimately determine the economy you ultimately achieve significantly and it should produce a series of this technology and the series should be inexpensive technical conditions must be met uh, and there are an infinite number of these conditions and this technology is the very know-how that Alexander Nikolaevich Kirillin together with his team keep secret but it will be revealed during the construction of the first 10 ton airship we will reveal to everyone and everyone will understand how brilliant and simple it is and everyone will join the race of course we will protect ourselves with patents and in various other ways but you can protect yourself from copying a difference of plus or minus a centimeter and it's already not the same so the option is simply to be the first and that's what we're aiming for the next question is about airborne generators are there any developments in this area and is it possible to base them on Slavyanka windings this question was already asked in the past I think on Thursday or maybe even on Tuesday the answer was yes it is possible are there any developments? There are no developments. Everything needs to be designed. Naturally, to design together with Dmitry Alexandrovich to give him the technical assignment for the generator on Slavyanka. Its mass, dimensions, rotation frequencies, the force with which the propeller will transmit, more precisely, yes, the force the propeller will transmit to the motor, to the generator. Everything is possible whether this will be more economically feasible than building wind turbines that stand on their own poles indeed definitely needs to be calculated but from a technical point of view why not everything is possible yes indeed after all so there are a few questions basically we talked about this and i will briefly answer it again now regarding funding yes the total number of shares is 50 billion but this number may change. I have already mentioned this. That's what the pre-launch stage is for. But we will definitely announce it maybe within a week. Yes, and, and they do not. It won't be. Because we are double-checking these calculations once again to make sure we don't miss anything, so to speak. There are questions regarding development plans, timeline, and when the first prototypes will be available. I think we have answered all of this today itself in detail. Probably no need to repeat ourselves at all. One share, one stock. Will it be like that? You can see for yourself that it doesn't quite work out that way. 50 billion shares, but only 500 million stocks for investors. This results in a conversion rate, but at least it's clear and transparent. They ask about special mash. Special mash remains, the agreement with Dmitry Alexandrovich remains and we still want to continue working with Dmitry Alexandrovich Duinov. That is why, indeed, as soon as Dmitry Alexandrovich Duinov and the company Special Mash are ready to implement the new project, the very first and important step is still to get the design bureau on its feet and ensure that the design bureau is fully operational. We will definitely announce this, including the financing conditions and provide details about this project. We have already given some general information. So there will be a special project. People are asking if there will be any privileges for investing in it and so on. So far, there are no such details. One of the main privileges of investing in new projects that our audience has is not even some kind of bonuses. This is, in principle, an opportunity to be the first to learn about them because the chance to invest in the next generation airship project at the pre-launch stage. Isn't that a privilege? Isn't it a privilege that you can manage to invest with a discount of a thousand? While people, a year from now, will be investing with a discount of 400, 300. Your conditions are already significantly three times better than those of people who learn about the project later. If you simply follow what we are doing, you can get the best investment conditions. There might be some promotions or additional offers, but for now, it seems that in the next generation airship project, we don't need any promotions or special offers because I think we won't have any problems with funding here. There will be a few more. More questions have come in on vcontactor. Yes, all the questions are finished here so we can take a look. 
Who will cover the cost of training airship pilots? Well, indeed. Naturally, pilots needed by the company will be trained at the company's expense and at no cost to them. Pilots who want to train independently, the school will also operate on a commercial basis, for example. So, how does the school make money? If a person expresses a desire to learn, they naturally pay for it. Uh, profit comes in. Dividends flow. Thus, it is generally preferred to make passenger seats spacious, as in an airplane. You can't even stretch your legs, typically in general. Alexander Nikolaevich Karilin, yes, is indeed planning for extremely spacious areas. A class of increased high comfort and above in general, all this will absolutely be done. If some transport company, S7, Aeroflot, anyone wants to take an airship and stuff it with airplane seats, we won't fight with them. Let them stuff it with airplane seats, definitely. Our operating company can independently and efficiently create very spacious items, whether they are sofas and other furniture for investors, or even luxurious personal airships with comfortable beds. In general, the market will decide everything. In any case, reality and actuality will decide everything. The plan in general is spacious. I don't want it to be like on an airplane. I don't want it to be like on a bus. All of this is done, understandably, for the sake of economy, efficiency, and so on. But it's time to move from economy to comfort. So that people enjoy it and not like you sit down and start swearing. Right now everyone really thinks of moving from point A to point B as a real hassle. You think, damn, should I take the train or the electric train to this airport? At the airport you have all those customs hassles. Then you get on the plane, it's cramped, you fly somewhere. Usually you get tired from the journey. Here the concept will be that you relax while traveling. I personally like traveling by train, in a compartment, because I can walk around there. I have a separate place where I can lie down, there's a table to eat at, and I can move around with stops. Yes, it takes a long time. It will be much faster and much more comfortable on an airship than in a train compartment. After all, yes, this will be more of a transport for traveling. But, I say again, no one will forbid transport companies from using it just as they use airplanes now. What is the maximum possible altitude that an airship can presumably reach, perhaps? Presumably the maximum possible altitude is still the stratosphere. 25 kilometers can be confidently stated, and in fact it is possible to go even higher. The question is about the configuration of the airship. Currently, on our aerostatics website, the ceiling is set at 2.5 kilometers. And this ceiling is set not because of technical capability, but because, from an economic point of view, it is initially easier to create a gondola for people. That is not airtight. This is an important consideration. So when you ascend to two and a half thousand, your gondolas are lightweight, you can breathe the air easily, and so on. When you ascend a bit higher, according to all standards and basic biology, you need to ensure the gondola is sealed, and you need to supply it with special pressure. There is a certain level below which the pressure in the cabin should not fall, and you must supply oxygen. All of this complicates both the development of production and the certification, licensing and so on, making the project more expensive, extending its timelines, theoretically. And in the future, naturally, we can ascend to the stratosphere and we will ascend. Just don't tell Kirill yet, he yells, asking why you need this. We say, what do you mean if we go up to the stratosphere? Well, he says, no need, it's beautiful to fly close to the ground. Why are you going up there? I say, why not? Look down at the ground from above, can you imagine? Then, he says, you'll do it yourselves. Well, in general, we'll do it. Which one? Aha. Uh -huh. Pasha. Someone noticed a mix-up with the discounts here. Yes, let me comment. There is some confusion with the stage name. The first ones are letters, 
Initially, it was also written on the website as if it was not the pre-start stage, but the first one. But the discounts were displayed correctly. That is, the fact that a package of 2000 has a discount of 700 is correct because 1000 is the average discount. For a package that might be worth $10,000, right? 2000 is a smaller package, so it has 700. That's the grid because it goes. But in any case, I have already taken a screenshot and will send it to the IT department for them to check. Well, right away, why the APC was not presented at the Army event, this is more of a question for the Sovelmash project, but I will comment, yes, the APC was presented last time. Thanks to this development, the necessary technologies were tested, the capabilities with Slavyanka were presented to potential clients and customers, and it can be said that the task of this APC was completed 100%. Coming back to the Army again, well, with what had already been shown, seemed to make no sense. Currently, there is a clear trend with various unmanned vehicles, quadcopters, drones, and similar devices. And moreover, 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 moreover. Positive music. These motors with Slavyanka, specifically the motor wheel, as many remember it, can indeed now be used to make a cargo drone, lifting it into the air with a payload capacity of 200, 250 kilograms. This is currently very needed for various purposes not just military. If we have indeed moved on to engines, for those who did not hear Dmitry Kmel's comments on Thursday, he came to the army, looked at the Volmage station and examined the engines for the moth. Dmitry Kmel will be the chief designer for the flying yacht. He said that he had spoken with specialists from OVL MASH and they agreed on further cooperation. He said that the engines from the Motelec might indeed be quite sufficient for the stabilizing engines for this yacht. In general, that's how it adds up very well. Regarding such questions, APCs and others, Dmitry Alexandrovich periodically holds expert sessions. It's better to write there. Well, yes. I hope it will happen. It's been a long time since we had them. By the way, we are also thinking about conducting webinars now. We said it would be Tuesday, Thursday, but we might change Thursday to avoid competing, so to speak, with expert time. Well, either we will spend the evening time there, so please also note that we might change the day or time. So, there were a few more questions. I don't know if you missed them or if it was intentional or unintentional. At the first presentation, the CEO mentioned that he had discussed the topic of airships with the Defense Department and Roscosmos. In your opinion, why are they not interested in this yet? What needs to be spent on crowdfunding? Well, in short, it's hard to finance when you're collecting money. Yes, they are very interested in this. There is a conclusion from the Scientific and Technical Council of the Ministry of Defense regarding airships stating that they need them for performing constant tasks. Airships with a capacity of up to 300 tons and a payload of 30, we plan to start with 2, then 10, and only then such large ones as 30 and up to 300. Everyone is indeed interested, but the country currently lacks the very design bureau that we have now started to organize, but in fact, we needed an organizer after all, and we ended up being the organizers ourselves. We gathered all the designers and got them to get along because each of them had their own opinion on the whole story. In general, an organizer was needed and we became that organizer. And a question about funding. Why does not the Ministry of Defense want to allocate money for this? Right now, well, basically, almost everyone in Russia has either relatives, acquaintances, or someone somehow connected to the events currently happening and everyone understands and is already well informed about the situation that the military is now only taking those who are well ready. And many companies are now engaged in this. They have started making some drones, bringing them to the testing grounds, proving to the military that they work and that they can provide service. Only in such cases do the military now place orders. More precisely, they are paying money. And now they certainly won't be spreading themselves thin by creating an airship industry. 
Roscosmos also has its own tasks with them, such as the development of technical specifications for the transportation of launch vehicles to the Vostokny Cosmodrome. They also need devices with a capacity of up to 300 tons, but their situation is not great. Firstly, various components related to space and other things are no longer being supplied to us. And our proton rocket carrier, for example, consisted of a certain percentage of foreign components. In other words, they are now retooling all the factories for the production of the Angara family. They are investing in the creation of the component base, those units and materials that we previously sourced from elsewhere, which is a very labor-intensive process. Firstly, they built their own spaceport, and now the ISS is coming to an end, involving the entire global community. They are definitely planning to build a new station without Russia. They will be constructing it near the moon in the near future. It will be a lunar station. Russia, along with China, India and others, definitely said that they will have their own station. So you also need money there just to compete with those guys. And this industry, well, they kind of think, well, it seems necessary. But it seems unnecessary there. Well, in general, everything always comes down to reality. And the reality is that there is a letter. Well, they are needed. But build them first, and then we will come and take them from you. Well, naturally, someone wants to operate them. For example, Roscosmos doesn't want to buy them at all. It wants to be provided with a rocket delivery service. Well, on one hand, it's good for us, but on the other hand, maybe, why don't you buy it? And we wouldn't fully hand it over to you, but this way our business will grow more and our capitalization will be cooler. If we start carrying rocket carriers, plus everything will be flying in the atmosphere, we will practically become something like a space company, not just an airship company. So why? Just because that's how life turns out. Here's another interesting question. Can airships be used in cities for transporting people? In cities, it is probably not particularly practical to use them for probably transporting people. For example, using them over cities if we consider people not counting various unmanned monitoring, deliveries of goods, for instance, from one end of the city to the other, or for example, from a factory in the suburbs to the city center, or from a distant factory to the city center, okay? Within the city, it is most likely only for some tourist purposes, likely. You arrive there on an airship, fly around the city, see everything, land on some hotel, everyone disembarks, then loads back up and flies somewhere else, but actually moving around the city, probably not. Why? It's not a fact that it will definitely be faster than the same subway. But if an airship subway is organized, it is probably unlikely to be cheaper than the subway. In general, we need to look, we need to calculate. But overall, cities are being designed. That is, old cities already have all the internal logistics, infrastructure, and other elements in place for current and new solutions. New technical solutions will be designed. New cities. For example, the Arabs are currently building their linear city, where it would be quite possible to use an airship that would simply circulate instead of the same metro line. That is, in new cities this possibility can be considered, but in existing ones it is probably not particularly feasible. Yes, in general this is not the first place, not the first project, business project that should be considered, and we'll see how it goes. Between cities definitely, between regions necessary between countries, okay, why not? If you consider it not as moving in discomfort, but quickly by plane, but as a journey, then it can be between countries. A hundred years ago, people used to fly across the ocean from Europe to America. So, Evgeny is asking, Pavel came out and said that now at the pre-launch stage, the open package can be increased. Is that correct? Evgeny, right now it is not possible to increase it but this option will be available later. Therefore, I will reiterate that there will be no possibility to increase the packages in the future. So, at this pre-launch stage, you should choose the package that you really plan to pay for, understanding that you will not be able to increase or take additional packages under the same conditions at the pre-launch stage.
But since some of you have probably already taken a small package thinking that it will be increased in six months, we will open the opportunity within the pre-launch phase to increase your package now, so you don't have to take another one. While the pre-launch phase is active, you will be able to slightly increase your package. But once the first stage begins, from that moment on, you will not be able to increase the package you took during the pre-launch. Well, I think more questions will come up, but we've been on air for two hours now, so it's probably best to wrap up for today. There are indeed many questions. There was a comment. In short, perhaps you could just fit the webinars into uh, 40 minutes. Good comment, I agree with it. But here is the most interesting question. Why did they start coming in only after an hour and a half? Well, as with the questions in general, yes. So for now, it is... Yes, it's generally good when the live broadcast lasts an hour. Yes. This is the time when a person can see all the information presented without unnecessary details. But we rarely manage to do that because we've been answering questions for already 40 or 50 minutes. Well, overall, everything seems concise without unnecessary details. Just the same questions about the stages and packages. You understand, we have to explain the same thing every time. Because for a person, today they found the project, today is their first day in the project. Every Tuesday is the first day in the project for us. So welcome. Thursdays are a bit different. Let's be more dynamic news, meetings with engineers. We will try to keep it within an hour. Bear. All right, that's it for today. Friends, once again, I ask you, please don't forget to like and share. Right now, just press a button and publish it on your vContact wall. I did it right away. It's very easy and useful for everyone right now. Also on YouTube. And don't forget to subscribe where you are watching now. That's vContacta. Subscribe so you don't miss our live broadcasts. We will always conduct them here. Well, that's all. So I guess that's it. Fedor, do you want to add anything else? Well, there is news. I will share it on Thursday. So come on Thursday if you want to hear the news. Anyway, thank you all. Goodbye. Bye, everyone.